Okay, so we're going live here. Let me just see if we are going live. Guys in the chat, please let me know if the live stream is on. I think we are. I think we're live. Okay, so uh, this is the stream from the grand uh, 64 player final for the World Championship Free Roll Tournament Series. So there were 64 tournaments. Each of the winners of those are now competing in this 64 player grand final. And we are down to the, let me just refresh the page here. Let's see, I think we're down to final four. Okay, final five players though. So one of the semifinals is already playing and the other one, uh, Fender is still waiting for his opponent. It's gonna be either Nader Dalili or Matranche. Uh, but let's just uh, jump into it. Let's go to this one. Um, so this is the first sem semi-final. Like Safa from Armenia uh -huh, versus Muama. Muama from Turkey. Okay, that's a lot of experience points right there. And a pretty, pretty good win-loss record. Decent rating from both players. Uh, the, this rating level, 2100 and 1950, that's definitely uh, in the advanced player range. Um, but probably not too much. Probably not going to see world class uh, error rates, but I expect that it's going to be pretty decent. And it's looking pretty good for uh, Safa here in this position. Okay, we, we, we started the, the stream a little bit early today because apparently this tournament is playing out a little bit faster than we expected so we figured that we might as well just turn on the stream a little bit early uh, so we're we don't have too many views at the moment because most of you guys were expecting us to start it in 15 minutes from now 11 o'clock central european time nevertheless let's see how these guys play and see who wins this pretty big tournament actually uh, 64 satellite tournaments up to this tournament. Each of those tournaments had like three or four hundred, three or four hundred players in it, and uh, yeah, it's pretty difficult to win a tournament with three or four hundred players. And then again, the winners then qualified for this tournament. So the winner of this tournament will have beaten I don't know thousands of of players basically. Okay, so now we've got some action in the chat. Dave Ray says it's on. Gold Plager says hello, Mark. Hello, Gold Plager. And Boris Tesla says hi. Good guys. Smash the like button, please. Let's see if we can get some more, more people tuning into this uh, stream here. It's uh, the satellite tournament for the World Championship in Monte Carlo, which is the 23rd of July to the 31st of July. And. Uh, yeah, that is, of course, the, the big event of the year. Uh, everybody wants to be a world champion. So the winner of this tournament wins the buy-in for the main championship division at the world championship. So pretty big price on the line here. Um, Armando, hey Armando. Armando is on the, the live stream. Good, okay, we're getting more viewers now, good. And in this uh, semi-final here, we're going to keep an eye on the other semi-final as well. Uh, I'm just going to drag this, the brackets out here so I can follow it. And I'm just going to put on the the, the current semi-final. Uh, let's see. And uh, it's looking good for uh, Safa. He's probably going to be ahead 4-0 to zero after this match. And that's about... Uh, Six, uh, eighty-four percent match-winning chances here for Safa after he wins a gammon in this position, which he most certainly will. So Safa has basically one foot in the final now. He just has to s seal the deal, win one more point, and there's the gammon. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna try to focus a little bit more on the game and do some commentary on the game. Okay, 6-5 opening, followed by double three. That's an interesting one. Okay, I think it's slightly better to, to make the five and the three point after the 6-5 opening because you really want to get that prime going. 
6-2, is that the best play? I don't think it's the best play. It feels annoying to get hit here and set back in the race. And that's exactly what Safa is going to do. 5-2 is a great shot. Muama hits from the bar. And I guess Safa has to hit here, even though it's a bit awkward. Another return shot from the bar from Muama. And that's an awkward one. I think Safa needs to come out here with a back checker. I think he needs to jump out here to the 15 point. Okay, he does. That's a good play. We do have a 30 second YouTube delay. So I don't think the players are going to be watching the stream for my advice. I think they're going to play their own their own uh, moves for three. Okay, maybe you want to come in with a three, maximize contact zone and come down there with a four. Good play, I think, from Safa. So far, I think Safa is playing good, except for the double three reply, which is kind of opening theory. 6-2, that's an awkward one. He, it can be played safe, but it's not very efficient to put a checker on the deuce point. I think Muama is going to find the safe play here. He does. Uh, is it the best play? Hmm. It does look a bit ugly, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so we're getting more people now on the stream. People are realizing that <laughs> that we started the stream a little bit early. So we've got Alex Flo, here from Romania. Um, and we've got Mop Up. I lost in the first round. Mark, you've got to check out the guy who beat me. He's pretty good. His name is Nadar. Okay, maybe it's uh, it's the guy from the other semifinal. And then we've got Emily DeGent saying, "Hey, Mark. Hey, Emily." And Simon Car Simon Carter says, "Mark, do you have a do you have the Champions League final in the background?" I I watched the first half uh, down on the street with my son. Uh, in the trolley trying trying to get him to fall asleep while I was watching the, the first half and now I just have the flash score uh, web browser to see uh, here in the background on my desktop so of course the Champions League in football that's a pretty big match and I'm quite sad to to not be watching it but uh, this is also a pretty big uh, online backgammon tournament so I figured I it's more important to, to do this live stream to 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 see who wins this tournament. This tournament has been running for 64 straight days on Bagaman Galaxy, and we've had literally thousands of players participating in this free roll series. Um, and the 64 players in this tournament were the winners of each of those 64 initial satellites. So the winner of this uh, will have beaten thousands of opponents and will be awarded with the with a ticket or with a seat or with a buy-in for the championship division at the world championship in monte carlo okay so three one that look that looks efficient i'm tuning back into the game here it's looking good for muama unfortunately he can't double because this is a oh that looks like a one-man holding game for safa here i think he's gonna run with one oh why not just leave one guy there i think that was a mistake from safa I didn't like that play. It's there was almost no risk in leaving one guy here. He could have played the one man holding game. So I think that was a mistake from Safa. You want to make it difficult for your opponent to beat you. Not easy for your opponent to beat you. So that was kind of one of those moves. Okay, so at least uh Muama is probably going to win a point here and uh yeah, and the match will continue. Let me just refresh the brackets over here and my other browser window to see if we found the other semifinals. No, we're still waiting for the other semifinal to start. It's the match between Nadar and Matranch in the quarterfinals that we're waiting to, to finish before the second semifinal begins. So it's five point matches, so it's rather short. Uh, with the normal time setting, so each player has five minutes to in their time bank. Okay, 4-2. This is a double, yes. And let's see what Safa does. Okay, he actually does have a free pass here. I think he should just take the free pass here. Even though he rolled a 3-1. I think it's a pass. We we're quite close to the end of the match, so by taking, he does preserve one free pass. 
I'm not sure though. If anybody knows this this cube action, let me know in the chat or if anybody has time to check it because I would have passed it. I would have used my my free take there. Even though you get a better point, you're you're down one roll. But I'm not sure. <laughs> it was a funny one. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Muama is getting blitz attacked. He survives for now. And I think that Safa is not going to make a blitzing move here. He's going to make a consolidating move. And I think he needs to split the back checkers with the deuce. Uh, I think the deuce was a little bit... It wasn't. I, I prefer the splitting play. He has the stronger inner board as well, which indicates that he can play a little bit more boldly. And it's very bad to get stuck behind a prime. Notice he's also ahead in the race, which means he has worse timing in a priming battle. So I would have split my back checkers there if I was Safa. Slightly too safe. Okay, looks like a fine play from Muama. And Safa is going to hit and split. Now the split is very clear. You don't want to get stuck. Ooh, that's a fan from Muama. Not good. Uh, so what kind of plays does Safa have here? If this was money game, he could have... Nah, I think... Shouldn't he come out and make some connectivity during Blitz here? Uh, I was about to say, I think the hitting play is wrong at this score because Safa doesn't need to win a Gammon. He just needs to win the game. And this is a very clear play. Safa got a hit. He's got a hit. That's for sure. He's got to come in with a 5 and hit with a deuce. There's no other play here. Good play. Good play. Okay, unfortunately he gets hit. Uh, but that was a good play from Safa. Because if he were to come in with a, on the deuce, he would be primed. So, again, a very easy play. He's got to attack, and he does. So should Muama. This is a priming battle. I think Muama needs to... Hit on, the, hit on the five here, even though he exposes two plots. Yeah, he can make he can make the 23 and hit loose on the five. That's actually a pretty decent play, I think. Trying to win. Ah, that's you, you can't win a priming battle without efficiency with your checkers. This is very inefficient, very low degree of checker utilization, and it's not good. Okay, guys, the view count is really picking up now. People are starting to realize that we started the stream early. Uh, okay, so Turger Efandi, Eflandi uh, tells us that it looks like a double pass, a 46 millipoint pass at the score. Yeah, that sounds about right. Sounds about it. it, it I, my guess was that it was a small pass as well. Okay, so now Safa has the six prime. This is looking very good for Safa. I think Muama's best chance here is to try to attack and see if he... Yeah, I would have attacked here. See if he could trap uh, Safa on the deuce point and thereby crunch. Now it's going to be very difficult to get Safa to crunch. Very difficult. And Safa has... He should just play this. Good play. It's impossible to crunch it. I think Safa just won this match, actually. Muama had one last fight in him if he were to come down and attack on the three point. But he didn't. And now it looks like Safa is cruising this semi-final nice and easy. And he's going to, I think he's going to be the first finalist in this uh, satellite tournament. Final satellite tournament. Yeah, it, it's getting worse for Muama here. It's just the, basically the worst spot you can be in in backgammon here. He's crunching. And he's trapped with three men behind a six prime. So Turka is telling us that uh, that Safa was actually an underdog here, uh, 51.2 versus 48.8 percent at this opening. Muama opened with 4-2, and Safa rolled 3-1, and now Muama doubled, which he's supposed to when he's trailing post Crawford. And rather than Safa utilizing his free take, he took the cube and got lucky. <laughs> but it was just a small mistake to take the cube. Yeah, this look, definitely looks like game over. I guess the winning chances now are down to... Uh, it's got to be less than 5% for Muama. 4% maybe. <laughs> it's almost impossible, maybe even less. It's almost impossible to win this position. 
And we're not going to see any trap plays or anything. Safa should just run his checkers home and clear from the rear because he's winning the race, basically. Uh, it's going to take forever for Muama to get all these four checkers home. And Safa will be basically done with the bear off by then. Um, yeah, Safa is cruising. Safa is cruising, and maybe the other semi-final will be ready. Maybe we're lucky with the timing here. No, we're still waiting for the other semi-final. Yeah, we're waiting for one of the quarter-final matches, the last quarter-final match to end. Oh, it's a double four for Muama here. Oh, sorry, double five. So he could actually... Um, he could actually run with one checker, but may I mean this is just so hopeless. How do you how do you have a sliver of hope in this position? I mean, if he runs with both, he's gonna lose in the race, basically a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, maybe it's correct just to stay with both of them and play a completely crunched deep anchor game. <laughs> Yeah, it's looking very bad. And uh, here, Safa should just bring one off. Good play. Okay, at, le at least Muama gets the three-point board. And Real Madrid just uh, scored three minutes ago. Vinicius Jr. scored for Real Madrid, and they're up 1-0 against Liverpool in the Champions League final in Paris. That's... Incredible. I watched the first half. Real Madrid had one shot on target, which was a goal actually, which which was cancelled uh, by the by the VAR referees. Okay, it's game over. Safar, congratulations, you're in the final. That's a great achievement so far. But this is winner takes all tournament. So yeah, the loser of the final will go home empty-handed. Which is, uh, okay, let's see the PRs. Okay, very good play by Safa. Very good play. Yeah, I felt like he was playing very well. Just some small mistakes. And Muama played very decent as well. So congratulations, Muama, for making this, this far. And uh, better luck next time. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, we came in a little bit late. Let's watch the, just watch some highlights here from the last match. Yeah, okay, so Galaxy, the three-ply. Analysis says you have 49.1% and it's a small drop. Safa opted to take this one, uh, even though he had a free drop. At least he got to save his free drop. Um, okay, this was a blunder from Muama that we didn't even notice. He made the tempo hit and that's a bad idea because now you're not going to win the game and win as many gammas. So just go for freedom here. Wow, that was actually a great freedom roll. It's just an ace that hits. Uh, yeah, he missed out there. Um, yeah, then we had... Then we had this one. I think I wanted to play this play. But apparently the best play was coming in here and pick and pass. Okay, I didn't like the pick and pass. I found it too ugly. Okay. But uh, Muama played stayed on the 24 points that I didn't like at all uh, this was my play okay so it's just a 10 millipoint mistake my play the pure play and look at this play <laughs> just switching with three which was would, would have been actually better than the play that Muama played uh, and then we had the 5-3 yeah here this was uh, Muama's last hope he could have attacked hoped that uh, Safa would have entered on the deuce and thereby um, being able to crunch. But uh, he didn't take this opportunity, and that's that was basically it. Uh, he just got killed right after that. Okay, guys, let's go to the quarterfinal match between um, Matranch and Nadar Dalili. Okay, so this is looking good for Nadar. Oh, wow, look at this. He's probably going to win this match. He can win an on double gammon and he's gonna be in the semi-final. 
Okay, very cool. Yeah, this looks like a this looks like a non double gammon to me. Ten crossovers to go, and how many crossovers does Matan have to save the gammon? Thirteen crossovers for Matran to save the gammon. He's not gonna make it. He needs a double six. He needs a double six. Six five is not gonna do it. Yeah, he needs a double six to have a small chance. Double four. I mean, it's better than nothing, but I don't think it's enough. Okay, so Mobop says Nader is a beast. <laughs> Apparently, Nader beat Mobop in the first round. Okay, guys, remember to smash the like button. It's a late night stream, this one. It's more than 11 o'clock now, Central European time. And which means it's got to be, what time is it now in, in Turkey? We've had a, we have a lot of Turkish viewers. I think it's midnight in Turkey now. Okay, so again, Real Madrid is leading 1-0 in Paris in the Champions League final. There's the T. <laughs> Look, yeah, okay, that's the T. Thank you. And Nadar is in the semifinal. Let's go to the semifinal. Okay, very close PRs, 8-8, eight and eight, basically. So, Nadar, you got lucky. Uh, but let's go to the semi-final first. Let me share a little little uh, ad here. So the World Bagama World Championship is going to be in Monte Carlo like it has been for the last, what is it, 36 years or 7 years or something like this. Fantastic location, July 23rd to July 31st. So make sure that you book a hotel. You can book at the Fairmont. Uh, we can help you with uh, with that booking if you need it, or you can find something in Beausoleil, the, the nearby town, where it's slightly cheaper to stay and just w walk on foot into the Fairmont Hotel. And I hope to see you, as many of you guys there. Remember to come and say hi if you make it. It's the Galaxy team organizing the World Championship this year, which is very exciting. Um, so let's now go to the semifinal. It's about to start. Each player has one minute break. Let's find this other semi-final here. There we go. Okay, match just started. Good game from Nader, and he's playing against Fender. And look at Fender, he has 2400 in Galaxy rating. Let's just check the nationalities here. Nader is from France, interesting. Rather new player in Galaxy. And uh, he doesn't have a very good Galaxy rating. But he just played an 8, so he's not without experience, that's for sure. But Fender from Holland is a Galaxy Grandmaster, because you, he's got more than 2400. Uh, so this looks like a strong player, Fender. I, I would guess that Fender is a big favorite here, but you know, it's, it's backgammon. So of course, Nader has a great chance here in this match. And then we have Alex Flo in the chat saying, by the way, Mark, yesterday I watched your Istanbul Basar video. It was very funny to watch. Cool. Yeah, that's one of our best videos. Very organic video. Oh, look at this 6-1. Look at this 6-1. I think you got to make the five point here. Yeah, that's a great play from Nadar. I think that's a great play. Because where do you play the six after you hit? That's the problem. So instead he made the five point. Now he's coming down and flexing with 6 to 5. Very good. Um, I think Fender is one step away from a cube here. It's not quite there yet. If this guy was out here, he could have he could double with a threat of achieving full freedom. But that threat is not very great all the way down from the 24 point. Double 4 is not a bad roll because you get to make the 9 point. But you do kind of disconnect that rear checker a little bit. And making it slightly... Slightly more difficult to get home, especially 6-5, which was a joker before. Now it's only a joker if you, if your opponent miss that uh, return shot after 6-5. Um, I don't think this is a double. Ah, that's a very easy take. I don't think this is a double. So now, at, I mean, he does have market losers with an 8, which is 6-2, 5-3, and double... F no, double 4 is not there. Sorry. So it's just 6-2, 5-3. 
So it's just 4 out of 36. And then his other market loser would be the ones that jumps and a miss. That would also be a market loser because this is a very powerful holding game if white gets full freedom. Because he cleared the midpoint and uh, he has perfect structure in front of the anger. So very easy, uh, a very strong holding game. But it's a big tick. There's so much counterplay here because uh, Fender has to go all the way with this back checker. I don't, I don't think those market losers were sufficient here. I It felt it feels to me, wow, 6-2. It feels to me like you want to double after you come out, get missed, and now you have an efficient cube. So this would be an efficient cube, I think, where blue would be giving up or folding a lot of equity, uh, but kind of had to do it because it's a drop. Um, this is where the efficient cube is, I think. Okay, 6-4. I think that Nader just needs to run with a back checker here. Get this one home, then it's going to be virtually impossible to lose a gammon. If you have three back checkers, then you could lose a gammon. The only advantage by having this guy here is sometimes you might be able to split if he clears one of the other points prematurely or something and then get some extra contact. Uh, is that a good play? Oh, well, you know, there's two blots in the inner board of Fender, so maybe that's a good play, maybe. At least he's rewarded after Fender rolls with double aces. Okay, so now we get into the holding game or late game contact, as I like to call it. I, I When the midpoint is cleared, I don't really call it a holding game anymore. Then I call it a late game contact. And it's looking good for Fender here. He's probably a 90% favorite here or something like this. The race is basically Jin, and he's going to win as long as, he not, that he do, as long as he doesn't get hit. Um, yeah, now the third point in front of the anger is cleared. Now the winning chances are very low for Nader here. So it's looking good for Fender. It looks like Fender is going to take a 2-0 lead in this second semifinal. And Liverpool is still ahead 1-0 with 73 minutes played in the Champions League final. Okay, double five, he opts to play safe, more or less. I think that's okay because you're not really gonna win a gammon here anyway. Um, so I think Fender should just play the safest possible uh, bear off strategy. Again, here, that would kind of indicate like the safest play is probably to, uh, to just take this guy out. Yeah, I think that's a good play. He could have taken out two checkers, but the gammon rate is so low that it doesn't really make sm make much sense to chase the gammon here and sacrifice some wins. So I think the safe route of Fender was correct. At least I would have played the same thing. Um, Nader is actually considering whether he should save a six here. <laughs> he opts not to save a six, which is probably because he's afraid of losing a freak gammon. I think it's fair enough. Okay, double deuces for Fender. Again, he should just stick to the, the safest possible strategy. And what's the safest possible strategy here? I think you just come up like this. I think that's the safest strategy. You could also be a little bit more aggressive and play this, which can kind of probably wins you a few extra gammons, but it seems to be a little bit more risky because now you're creating this blot on the two point. I agree with Fender's play here. Just keep it as safe as possible when the gammon rates are so low. Okay, double five. Okay, mop up is giving us some information here um, about the PRs of Nador and they look quite good in the previous matches, 4.5, 4 6.5, and 6.5. Okay, so Nader is probably grossly underrated on Galaxy. He played very few matches as well. We've got uh, Max Urban in the chat. Max Urban was in this tournament. We've got uh, Oliver Squire in the chat. He was knocked out in the second round. I wonder when... Uh, when... Uh, in the tournament, Max Urban was knocked out. That was probably two of the favorites. Okay, 4-3 for Nader here. He's gonna... Okay, he's placed the Blitz. That's a nice move. That's a nice move. Where's, where's the cube? The cube should be coming now. This is a huge cube 
from Nadar. This is a huge cube. He's got 11 in the zone. Very good cube. Look at this blitz attack. Great cube from Nadar. He's putting on pressure here from Fender. Uh, on Fender. This is such an easy take in money game. Since Fender is not on the bar, Fender has made, made some structure himself with a 7 point. He's just down 14 pips in the race. Very easy take in money game, which is like a neutral score. Which is like 0-0 zero, zero to 17 or something like this. Now Fender has a tough decision because he's ahead 2-0 to 5. That makes this decision tough because he doesn't. He has to be careful not to take and lose a gamut. I'm not sure here. I'm really not sure here. It feels weak to drop it, but at this score, you know. Yeah, Fender opts to drop. Aye, that's an interesting. That's an interesting position. It's difficult to to really think uh, deeply about positions here when. You're doing commentary, uh, but I would have have to think deeply about that position. If anybody had time to take a screenshot or whatever, you can uh, you can let us know in the chat. To, is this a slot? I think this is a slotting play from Nader because of the duplication present. He could also just be boring and make the twenty three point, but I think he can slot here actually, even though he's outboarded because of the duplication of force are so powerful after the slotting play. I don't like that play. Then I prefer the to make the 23 point instead of this play. Okay, that's a fantastic shot from Fender or fantastic roll and he makes a great he makes a great play, of course. 5-1, not good. Nada really wants to split his back checkers here so he doesn't get stuck behind the prime. But where to play the five then? Oh, I think I would probably move this plot instead. Uh, it's more efficient to slot the four than to stack the six. And you still have that four duplication going on. So I think it's better to keep the plot out here. Now Fender is doubling as the leader in the match. You know what? I actually like this cube. As the leader in the match, three away, four away, you need high winning chances in order to, to double. Um, you're, what you're scared of here is Nadar taking it and redoubling to four. So you're scared of your opponent's redoubles. But it, as long as he doesn't redouble, his take point is actually quite high because it's very efficient to be four away, two away. So that means that in a gammonless position, Nadar actually doesn't really want to take a cube. He wants to just pass and be four away, two away. But it was kind kind of gammonish, which means Nadar has some winning chances. And But... Uh, yeah, I think I like the double pass actually, even though it's quite exotic at this score when the leader three away is doubling. Okay, 2 1, that's a great shot for Fender. So Fender is so happy to have established this advanced anchor. That means that he's not going to lose a gammon here. I think uh, Nader needs to make the advanced anchor as well. It just takes priority over blocking here you just make that advanced anchor and now and play a mutual holding no i think it's the wrong idea i think it's better to make that anchor than to make the 10 point who's this guy in the chat he's spamming the chat brian f i don't know who you are brian but you're spamming the chat what's up <laughs> jeff willis says i thought it was a drop yeah it might have been i think so too actually Okay, oh, double five, it's blocked. Okay, now the 10 point came in handy for Nadar, but uh, it's still a very powerful roll. Wow, 6 4. The best, the best roll for Nadar. He gets freedom. Wow, that was a good roll. I think actually that. Oh, the ace is ugly. Where to play the ace? You, if you play this, you can't play the ace, so you have to play this ugly play. You have to play 6 to 2. There's no way that you should leave a shot when you're facing this super strong inner board. Yeah, he plays safe. Good play, Nader. Uh, for three. We could let go of the midpoint here, which is usually what you want to do before start burying checkers. But it 
there seems to be quite a lot of contact with the midpoint with all these checkers out here. So maybe I would keep my midpoint one more roll. It's one of those very specific uh, scenarios. You've got uh, you've got all these principles on how to move checkers and backgammon. I'm actually almost like developing a book, a new book in my in my mind these days about how to structure your decision making process in backgammon checker play. And it seems that there are some game plan things you kind of want to stand, want to understand. Uh, there are some concepts or some principles that kind of leads us to to see which moves are better than other moves. And then there's a lot of specific situations in backgammon where it's kind of like if you don't really know the specific situations, there's no way you're gonna you're gonna find the best play except for being lucky. Um, so, for instance, clearing the midpoint before you start burying uh, that's one of those very specifics in the situation this doesn't look too good for uh for fender here again another ugly 5-1 i didn't i failed to notice how that ugly dead checker came to be on the ace point but uh doesn't look good here okay so now that's a that's the best play i think nader made a good play here just giving t 12 shots and it's the move with the most upside because you're solving the problem by clearing from the rear and you're putting your checker in front of your opponent's anger. Okay, you really want to play this four to block, but what about the ace? You can't play this. So I guess you gotta play this move. Yeah, good play by Nader. JP says, Hi Olsen, are you the eyes of Shiva? I'm not the eyes of Shiva. Uh, I don't think any one in particular are the eyes of Shiva. It's a it's a roll and backgammon. It's double aces. Okay, six three. Yeah, you gotta play a one man holding game. Fender is actually ahead in the race. Okay, now the five one works. <laughs> Finally, it works. Um, at this score, if there's the slightest chance of gammon, Nader should be doubling super aggressively. But there's no gammon in this position. Fender has already gotten 12 of his 15 checkers into his home board and it's going to be very difficult to make a close out there's no gammon here so i think nader is doing the right thing in not doubling at, at in this given moment oh there's the freedom wow that's a great shot uh fender is ahead in the race here oh that's a three one that's that equalizes it and notice that nader has a gap and a dead checker so that's wastage it's inefficient racing or bear off structure so this race has actually gotten very close remember to like and subscribe guys uh, to the youtube channel if you haven't already so you can get notified on when we release videos we've got our instagram bagaman galaxy and we've got our facebook and we've got my personal instagram as well mark olsen 10 i think <laughs> isn't it mark olsen 10 i think so Okay, so what's going on here? So Nader is considering to double. Oh, yes. He's up six pips. That's a good double. This gap, though, seems very, very inefficient. This is a tough one. There's a little bit of wastage penalty here if you're doing an effective pip count. Oh, this is difficult. The thing is that Nader has four checkers off, which means he has a six roll position. Oh, oh, this one is difficult. This one is very difficult. Fender, the thing is like six pips, it's too much usually at such a short race, but Fender has some advantages here. Like he's more efficient he has less wastage, so his pip count is more representative of his actual race. Okay, he takes it. I mean, I'm not sure here. The racing positions are not exactly my strongest uh, position type, but I can definitely see why he was tempted to take. And Fender's take point in a gamblerless position is actually very low. So uh, probably like 20% or even less. So it's a 
it's like one extra pip or one and a half extra pip compared to a money game uh, cube action. Because going, if Nader wins two points, it's not that bad compared to just winning one point. You know, he's he's just gaining 10% additional match winning chances from 40 to 50% match winning chances. And with that in mind, I think maybe Fender did well taking this cube. The, the take point is really low. I think it's like 19 or 20% or something. If anybody knows in the chat, they can let, let me know. We can all get wiser. Okay, so it's essentially double match point now. Let's see, Nader should probably double, I don't know. He chooses not to double. Um, this one is tricky, huh? This is tricky, oh, that's a lot of blots. But I guess you have to, I guess you have to hit. Ah, that was tricky. Okay, it's also a little bit funny that not, not, none of the players have doubled yet. It's probably because both of them are not really sure whether they are favorites or not. That's another tough move, 5-3. It's less efficient to make the 5-point when your opponent has... Is, or it's less... Uh, it, you prime him. It's less effective than a usual position after your opponent has an advanced anger on the 21-point. So I'm not really sure whether the best play here was to make the five point with five. It's very tricky because he had so, so many good fives and threes to be played all over the board. Um, okay, the cube is still in the middle. I think that Fender should double now. I think he's definitely a favorite in this position. Let's see how Nader plays this five three. Again, a difficult... I mean, I would be biased towards making the five point here but the seven point or the bar point is very powerful because of the stack on the six point so you're basically making in creating inefficiency with that stack there when you make the 18 point that being said i i don't know ah wait a minute when you make the 20 point you're actually giving up some contact here because you're moving your rearmost checker yeah i'm not sure it could be better to just make the 18 point and then keep that checker as far back as possible but the race is not i mean he's actually quite close in the race so maybe this was a good i don't know <laughs> i don't know i was switching back and forth between those two plays okay so fender again he doesn't double that's a mistake here and i don't think he should hit i think he should just make the deuce point here because he's ahead in the race he's going to be ahead 18 pips after this move if he doesn't hit Okay, he tries to go for freedom. I think it's a little bit too annoying when you get hit here. I think I would have just made the deuce point, but the, the game plan is correct at least, so maybe it is better. Uh, Fender was ahead in the race, so he was seeking freedom. That's absolutely a good plan, a good default plan, I would say. Okay, again, no cube. What's going on here, guys? 6-3, that's a good shot. Nader's going to make the bar point here. That's for sure. He's going to make the bar. This is not the right idea. Don't go for a blitz attack here. The race is very close, and you have such a nice priming move available. Nah, I don't like it. I think the, I think the priming play is better. He just has to win a single game. He doesn't need a gammon. And I think you should double here, actually. This is a cube from Nader. Now there are market losers. Yeah, good. Okay. At least he cube. He probably missed some cubes, but uh, better late than never. Here there are legit market losers. And Fender just needs... <laughs> he just needs 32% to take. So, of course, he has 32% here. He's ahead six pips. Uh, but he is under pressure. That's a good roll from Fender. He's going to hit, of course, I think. I mean, is he considering just consolidating here, not hitting? Okay, Wilson's Emilio is suggesting to shift the arrow color something else okay he does hit and he comes out ah but this color we can't barely see this color i gotta go with something more bright okay let's try green 
Four one, that's a great shot. That's a great shot. You're gonna cover and you're gonna hit with the ace. You're gonna hit and you're gonna cover. Good play. Okay, it's looking good for Fender now. Fender is in a winning position, but it's still very close. I mean, it's probably like 60-40 or something like this. Maybe a little bit better for Fender than 60-40 here. Okay, 4-2. I think he needs to make the four point. Yeah, but I'm not completely sure. And Nader dances. Okay. Tough decision here for Fender because Fender could actually go for the kill here by playing very aggressive, but I think he's doing the right thing, just bring it, bring it home. That's the problem though, now <laughs> Nader has a very strong uh, shallow back game here, which makes this game very close. Okay, that's a great hit from Fender, he gets a little, oh, 6-4 is a key roll. The bar point is such a crucial roll when you're trying to bring your checkers home in a holding game or a back game. So now Fender is back in the lead. Okay, no shots. Uh -huh. Notice this inefficient semi-dead checker on the deuce point here. That might cause some trouble along the line. Okay, this is an interesting decision. No, I don't like that play. I don't like that play. I think we need to step up with the deuce here and maybe come down because Nader could have a, a timing issue here. Yeah, look at this. Now Nader has to break the 20 point. That's why he needed to come up with a deuce earlier to preserve mobility. Now he's in trouble. Yeah, okay. Okay, actually, I think it's I think Nader did the right play. It's probably better just to switch. But this is just bad because now you're just yeah, destroying your home board. But uh, I think he did the right play, actually. I was a little bit too fast. Now he needs to run. No, he could still... He could actually just play this one. Oh... I think I would play this and 6 to 5. I think that would be my play. So let's see if you run. Ah, oh, he's just giving up the back game. Okay, he chooses to run. I'm not so sure about it. Okay, great shot from Fender. He can clear from the rear, which he definitely should. Oh no! That's too big of a gamble. Oh, Fender gets rewarded. That was a big play. I think that was too big. I think we should just clear from the rear here with 2-1. And Fender, it's looking good for Fender. Where was Fender from? From Holland, okay, the Netherlands. Okay, so it's looking like Fender is gonna be the second finalist. But let's see, it's not over yet. At least Nader managed to not crunch his front position. Okay, 6-4. Okay, look at this. There's gonna some shot value here. Yeah, he gets the shot. He gets a chance. He just needs to roll an ace. Nader needs to roll an ace. If not, Fender will be the finalist. Oh, he misses it. And then this Fender rolls double aces. Oh, okay. It looks... Oh, he does roll double aces. <laughs> okay. No, Nader missed it again. Okay, he had the chance. Nader had the chance. Yeah, that's game over. Fender is in the final. And look at the Champions League here. It's 1-0 to Real Madrid. We're five minutes into the overtime. Five minutes into the overtime. It's looking like another Real Madrid Champions League title. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Okay, Fender wins the match. Let's see. Good play by Fender, 4.1. Yeah, and uh, Nader, 6.3. So Fender did indeed play a little bit better. Um, let's just review the last game here and let's head on over to to the final. Uh, yeah, they're clearing from the rear. Yeah, already here. We, sh we see that he should come up here. 6-2, uh, yeah, 6-2. The best play was to simply just run out and preserve mobility. You could have also played this six probably. And the 6-4. Oh, here he should have gone a little bit early for the attack while he still had some structure. What about this 2-1? Wow, hats off. Well played, well played. I would have played safe here. Uh, high pressure situation, really strong play by uh, 
defender. Impressive. I want to see... Uh, okay, there's a lot of blunders in this game. I want to see the cube actions. This cube, it was a take in the race cube here. Very good. Okay, he actually has 24% winning chances. So it was a big take. It was even a take for money. Then you had this cube. Big pass. It was even too good. Interesting. And then you had... Uh, oh, yeah, missed double... Uh, missed cube here in the blitz. Two on the bar. Looks like a pass. And then this one here. Very close decision. Very good. Okay. Good. And then this one. Yeah, this cube was too early from Fender. It's just too early. He doesn't have market losers. Like, he should make an escape attempt. Get missed. And now you have an efficient cube where your opponent has to give up so much equity. Uh, let's uh, quickly watch an ad and let's get the final up and, up and running. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Okay, guys. Here's the final. Just begun. Okay. Double aces. Wow. What a roll from Fender here. So now Fender is playing blue and Sapphire is playing white. So it's opposite of what they played in the semifinal. Interesting. Smash the like button, guys. Yeah, final has already begun. Uh, let's see. Fender is considering to cube here, I guess, but it's still too early. Wow, what a roll. So unless Sapphire rolls a deuce now, I think Fender is going to double this position. I think this is a double. I think this is a double. Because Fender is not at the edge, so he's getting primed here. Uh, maybe if Fender or if Sapphire had rolled something to make the four point or something, it would have kept the cube away. But this is a good cube from Fender here. Is it a take? I, th I think it's a take. I think it's a take because you're ahead six pips and you also had some counterplay on that anger there. So I think it's a take. But nevertheless, Sapphire opts to, to drop. Fair enough. So a five-point match. Yeah, the winner of this match, it's quite high stakes because the winner wins the entry fee or the buy-in for the World Championship in Monte Carlo 2022. It's played, as you can see here in the stream on the right, it's from July 23rd. That's the day of the Monte Carlo Open. And July 25th is the day of the registration for the World Championship and the July 26th is the day one of the championship division. But we have uh, basically tournaments running already from the 23rd. So I hope to see as many of you guys there. Remember to come over and say hi. I want to meet as many of you guys as possible. And it's the first year where the Galaxy team is uh, organizing the event. We'll have Arda, the legendary tournament director, to, to manage the tournament. And uh, we're very happy to have signed him. And by the way, we have new uh, champions of the of the Champions League trophy. Real Madrid won it yet again. Yeah, congratulations to all of you Real Madrid fans. Pretty impressive. Okay, so this is a holding game position. Safa doubles this hold. This is not a double. This is worse than a standard uh, default holding game. In the default holding game, you have already full freedom. So that means you've cleared the, the, the 14 point. The, the 7 point is a bonus point. That's very powerful. And the pip count is also in his favor. But this is very ugly. And you have all these gaps and the goalkeeper here. So this is such an easy take. There's so much contact value. Look, he's getting a direct shot even at the very first uh, roll. So very easy take here from Fender. And he did take it. Very good. And there he hits the shot. So he hits. And what about the deuce? He opts to play safe with the deuce. That was awfully safe. Maybe he could have found another play. Wow, look at this play. I think we make the five and we hit loose on the ace. I think that's the best way to, to use this double aces. I think that's a good play. Okay, so Saffir already doubled. Wow, double sixes. Yeah, that's a great roll. Great, great roll. Come down with two from the midpoint. Yeah, that's amazing. 5-3. Okay, it's very dangerous to stay with both of these back checkers. So I think we need to liberate one of them. Just to minimize blitzing rolls. Yeah, I think that's a good play. 
I think that's a great play actually from uh, Fender. Uh, three one. Attack! 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 Good play. Wow, six three. Wow, what a roll! And he's gonna double hit, of course. Even though he's outboarded, you still want to double hit. Yeah. Lucky roll from Safa. He enters with a hit. Lucky roll from Fender. He doesn't get blitzed. And the best five, I guess, is this one. You're leaving a double shot if you don't hit. Great shot from Saffir. Great, great shot. Quite exciting. Quite exciting uh, game so far. Okay, 4-3. Oh, that's a great shot. Saffir can make the four point. Yes, and Fender fans. 6-4. It's not a hitter. But he gets some freedom. And Fender really wants to enter. He doesn't. And he's in trouble now. Oh, double sixes. That's the probably the worst roll he could roll. Maybe double four was worse. Fender's in. Wow. Fender has a good chance here to play a containment game. Now he wants to hit on the bar point. Oh, that's, oh, that's a dangerous one. If you hit, that's an awful lot of shots. Maybe you have to play this four, this ugly four. Uh, what else could we play? We could play something like this. This is a tough one. Wow. I think we need to hit. We need to hit because we can't really play. Even if we wanted to play this, we can't play an ace. So we're hitting with the ace, that's for sure. And then the question is, do we play safe to minimize some shots? You know, you leave, you remove 5, 3 and 6, 2. So it's four less shots. Okay, he chose to play safe. I think it was a good play. When you're up against a five-point board. Uh, okay, so Fender is not trying to recoup here. By the way, if he does, Safra's take point will be 25%. So Fender needs to get up to 25%, 75% uh, winning chances before he recoups. But he's actually trying to to get Safra to crunch here because if he traps a second back checker and makes a close out, then he could win a gamble. And this is not good for Safra. This is not good. 5-4, that makes a point somewhere, I think. I think you make the 9 point and leave... It's just double five. What is it? Five six. It's just five six. If you make the nine points, just five six, and then you have more outfield control with two guys there. If you make the ten point, it's zero shots instead of two. But then you don't have double coverage if if uh, Safa ends out here behind the point. So I would choose to make have double coverage here and make the nine point. So if Safa comes out here, then we have double coverage or here we have double coverage everywhere. The price is just that we. We leave two shots out of 36. Okay, he chose to play safe. That's lucky now because it's blocking. Uh, look at this nasty, nasty roll. Actually, I hadn't thought about the 5-3. That's very nasty. Would we have had a 5-2? Yeah, we would have had a 5-2. Uh, that was equally nasty here if we made the 9 point. But here we have 5-3 and 6-2, actually. So maybe this was better. Maybe it was a great play. Uh, this is the deuce, and I guess this would be the four because you want to stay as far back as possible to squeeze your opponent with as much contact as possible. Look at this. This could be a gammon win for Fender. This could be a gammon win for Fender. Okay, so Fender, is he going to go for a blitzing switch or is he going to go for a pure priming play here? Good question. He could actually go for the blitzing switch and try to win, try to make the closeout immediately and win the gammon. Big decision here. If it was double match point, for sure the pure play would, would be better because you're winning more games here. You're not giving your opponent an easy way out. He could roll a double three after you switch. But yeah, he chose to switch. And uh, Safa entered with an ace. 6-1, that makes the three point. Very nice. Okay, this is looking good for Fender. He, he wants that close out. He wants it badly. Or he wants to fish for more checkers. If he gets the chance to make a closeout with two checkers on the bar, he's going to take it. Which, mean, which means he is going to go down and hit loose here. Yeah, you hit loose and you come down. Good play. He will be happy to have a closeout here to win 40% gammon. But even if Zephyr rolls an ace here. Yeah, look at this. It, even if he rolls that ace, it's still not good for Zephyr because if he gets a third back checker, trapped then he's gonna lose even more gammons 
look at this yeah the gammon situation just got worse i think or did it because at least Sapphire has that anchor now rather than being closed out fully oh look at this a fourth checker would be horrible i this is not looking good for Sapphire. now fender is a favorite to win the gammon and look he's even gonna pick up the fifth back checker now he's a big favorite to win the gammon and Sapphire has no contact value because even if he gets lucky to hit a turnaround shot how on earth is he gonna win it with a two-point board so this could be game over we might see a champion here fender might be going to monte carlo to participate in the world championship of backgammon yeah six three really nice fender i'm not sure if we have fender's identity who is fender ah okay fender is Ilya tarjin I know Ilya is a solid player. Very good. So congratulations to Ilya. Or let's not jinx it. It's not completely over yet. There is a small chance that Saffir can save the G here, even though it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Yeah, this is not looking good. Uh, Saffir actually wanted to get some guys off that ace point here. Now he wants to play two guys off the ace point so he can get a shot if uh, Fender rolls an ace. Okay, he does. Fender doesn't roll an ace. It's not looking good for Saffir. It's not looking... Okay, there's the ace. Saffir needs to roll... There's the ace! He did it. He has a chance here. He has a chance. He's still a favorite to lose a gammon, I think. But he actually has a chance. Now, just... Ah, is it enough to play safe? <laughs> I was about to say, just play safe, Saffir. But maybe it's not enough. Yeah, because you want some outfield control. You need to hit him one more time. And he does hit him one more time. It's not over yet, guys. Okay, that's a great shot. Oh! Saffir... Ah, I think, yeah, you just gotta hope. Oh, Safa got lucky there with the 3-1 for Fender, much a small one. 4-1 is a horrible roll. Uh-oh, he needs a double. Ah, it's over. It's over. Safa almost made it. But we have a champion. Congratulations to Ilya Tardin, Tardin for winning the... the the final satellite. I mean, it's such an incredible thing, you know. He... he First of all, you had to win one of the 64 tournaments with three to 400 players in each. And then you had to go ahead and win a 64 player final satellite. Uh, what a, yeah, what an accomplishment, <laughs> beating thousands of players like this. Congratulations, Fender or Ilya Tarjin. Uh, really well done. And I hope that we get to see you in Monte Carlo. Yeah, congrats, Fender. So uh, really good. And 9 PR for Saffir, 6 PR for, for uh, Fender. We can just see some highlights here. Yeah, this was a take. Like I, my guess was this was a take as well. Because uh, Saffir had a 6 pip race lead. And he had some counterplay to these uh, guys over here. I think for me, this is more of a question of whether this is a double or not. And the thing, the reason I thought that it was a double is because we've got him trapped behind a solid 5 prime. And he's not at the edge of the prime. That's the big difference. If Saffir was here on the edge, it wouldn't be a double. Okay, then we had game... Oh, it's just a two-game two game, two game uh, match. Uh, the double sixes. How did he misplay this double sixes? Okay, so you come out. You come down. Ah, he played this ugly-looking... Ugly, ugly, ugly six. The better six would have been just to clear the seven point leave an ace shot but who cares at least you stay pure and flexible uh, rather than getting that ugly daily builder there and that's why he can't even double this position look how big of a mistake it is to double uh Safar is just a 58 percent favorite and that's nothing in a holding game it's for all the reasons we we talked about in the during the match you know he still has to liberate these checkers he doesn't have full freedom yet he has this ugly 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 uh, daily builder or semi dead checker all the way down the deuce point and all of these gaps so this goalkeeper is very strong for for uh, fender 
And Fender's front position is beautiful as well, which is really important as well when you're playing a contact game. Uh, then we had some blunders here. Okay, the okay, this one was tricky, the 4-1, so apparently it's wrong to safety it. It would have been better to just make the structure. I think it's because you get this nice outside prime out here, even though you do give uh, two, four more shots from the bar, 2-6 and 3-5. Tricky play. I wasn't sure about that one. Deuces. Uh, okay, so Fender made the three-point here. The problem with making the three point, even though it's you're improving your prime structure, is that your all the rolls where uh, Sapphire ends out here, you could have had much better outfield control, especially if it comes out here to the seven point. So I think that's what the computer wants to do. Look at the computer play, just maximizing outfield control, not giving any chance to let your opponent uh, free from this containment game, and then you can kind of make your prime from the rear. Uh, yeah, cool stuff. And the 5-4 here. Oh, I, we didn't even talk about this play. For whatever reason, my brain didn't see it either. I was thinking about, okay, do we make the 10 or the 9? I actually prefer to making, making the 9 rather than the 10. Uh, but maybe I was also wrong about that. But look at this play. Look how powerful this play is. Full outfield control. I mean, this is actually an obvious play. <laughs> you can't really miss a play like this in a, if you want to be a high-level player. Uh, but for whatever reason, during the match and while doing commentary, my brain didn't see that move either. So maybe it was the same with Fender. Maybe he had too much focus on just squeezing him for contact over here. Um, but of course, it's a beautiful move. Okay, this one was tricky. Okay, so I wasn't sure again here whether we go for the immediate closeout uh, and giving him a chance to get lucky uh, to chase that four-point gammon, or if we just... Ah, look at this, it doesn't even hit loose. Okay, because I thought the priming play would be still to hit loose and try to go for the closeout still. But the better play is just to not hit at all and try to get him to crunch even more. Interesting. Really interesting computer play here. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So the computer actually wants him to come in as fast as possible. Why are you putting the second checker on the bar when you want, to, when you want him to crunch more? I mean, what a smart play by Extreme Gammon here. I can see it now that we are shown really intelligent play by the computer. Yeah, then no more blunders. No more blunders. This is nothing. Um, yeah, nothing. Yeah, congrats to, to Fender or to um, Ilya Tardin. Uh, good stuff. We hope to see you in, uh, in Monte Carlo, Ilya. Uh, yeah. I hope you guys like the stream. We try to make it as educational as possible while also covering this this grand online final. Um, we've had a lot of views already, 460 views. Not bad from such a late night stream here uh, at the same time as the, the Champions League final. Remember to smash the like button and uh, see you guys next time. We're going to put on some ads here. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. See you guys. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more.
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Thanks for watching this video. Did you smash that like button? Remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to not miss out on future videos. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and my personal Instagram, Margolson10. And see you in the next 